Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, I told you I'd give you a tour of the inside of the truck and that's what we're here to do today. Um, keeping in mind, I wanted to go with a very simple build uh, as well as somewhat cost effective uh, with prices the way they are today. So, let's jump into it. I know you've seen it uh, peaks inside the back, so let's get, well, let's just get to it. First of all, it's my firebox. Uh, this is where I, you know, all my firewood and kindling and everything. I always carry a couple of extra towels with me. Uh, you, you just never know. Right? One day I'll probably fall in the lake and you guys will get a good laugh out of that. And here I have my fire starter, which you've seen. I have a strap in case I ever need one. Lighter, bug juice. This is where I keep my, this is my internal lighting system right now and it's pretty effective. Um, it lights up the inside of the truck really well and it's also, if you can see, it's a little bug zapper and it does work. I need to clean some of them dudes out of there. So here I keep, I usually just take enough firewood for a campfire to my own kindling, which I get out of my backyard. Uh, it falls out of the trees, I break it up and I throw it in the box and there we go. Uh, what I call my fire gloves. These are just, you know, I got these at uh, Harbor Freight. They're leather gloves, five bucks, and they work great. All right, now let's take this out of the way. All right, well, let's get to the kitchen. Okay, this, you'll notice my homemade little strap here because this dude is on wheels. Now this thing is great. Um, it's an underbed storage uh, unit that I picked up at a yard sale for like five bucks. Um, but this is my kitchen, everything I typically need. I have bowls, cups, paper towels. Oh, I also have one of these, which I'll show you that in a minute. Aluminum foil. And these are where I keep my utensils. You can see that, I hope. Let's see. Make sure. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, knives, forks, miscellaneous. Close that back up. On this side, a little bit more of the same. Got some pots and pans, uh, plates, first aid kit. Um, oh, and this is always important to take. I always suggest you put these in a plastic bag so I can wash my dishes. I'm going to close that back up. There we go. Now I said I've got this cord right here because this dude is on wheels. I'm just sliding right back up in there. Flip that. Unhook you. Come in there. Slide it back up. And it prevents you from going any far, farther forward. Now you might be able to see this here. All that is is um, a lantern holder for if I, in case I need a lantern. Now, okay, back to this guy. Come around this side. Uh, right here, oh, let's do this. Right here is where I put my power source. I have a 12 volt uh, trolling mode battery. That uh, I have several of them for my boat. So I just pop one out, it's always on a trickle charge, drop it right there, the wood box goes right next to it, and we're good to go. And I have these hook up to it. So I have a short one, so I can hook it to the battery, and just by popping down the tailgate, pop that little guy in there, and now I can uh, charge my batteries for my camera. I'll put that away in a minute. Uh, the bed. Okay, it's basically a twin mattress frame. Nothing special about it in a twin mattress. Uh, after installing the floor and learning that uh, cardboard is $50 a sheet, I bought one sheet, fit it in, and fortunately I had some scrap plywood that I kind of jigsaw puzzle piece together for this side that's underneath the bed. It doesn't take any real weight, but it helps keep the floor level. 
uh, standard indoor outdoor carpet, nothing expensive, and just tacked it down. <clears throat> now, back to my power. Once I hook up to the battery, I found one of these. It's actually, you know, the, uh, I guess, cigarette lighter, converter, whatever. But you can put two of them in. I have that for a reason, which I'll get to shortly. Because I need the power up closer to the front. So what I did was, I bought some of this. This pipe insulating foam, you split down the center. Put that back. And I took pieces of it and attached it here, here, and up the side. Just to keep the cord up off the floor. And when I'm traveling, all I have to do is just flip that stuff there and it's out of the way and it stays up there just fine. But what I use that for is um, I've got a couple of things I use at night. Uh, uh, a fan and I have a portable DVD player. Now the portable DVD player I got has an adapter that you can plug into one of these and it and it's also rechargeable. So it's charging and running off the uh, 12 volt power until the same time. And I also have a fan, but hold on, I'll grab it. And here's my fan. It's also rechargeable. This thing is awesome. Um, I paid about, I don't know, I think it was like 35 bucks for this thing. It's got a 200 milliamp uh, rechargeable battery in it. I have not put this thing on the charge since my last trip, which is well over a week ago. You know that or not. This dude puts out quite a bit of air, but <clears throat> since it has, it's USB rechargeable, I can take my adapter, plug it in, plug this in, and then run it off direct power. It's rechargeable, and it claims that on uh, medium speed, it'll run for like 40 hours. Well, I put it to a test. I put it on a full charge, put it on medium speed, turned it on, and let her go. And uh, it took almost two days before it went from... Well, you can't see it out here in this light. We have a green power light. Green means it's a pretty full charge. When it gets down to about half charge, it turns amber. And it took almost two days before it hit amber. But on high power, the research I did uh, said you, you get up to maybe six hours. So depending on how hot it is, I can plug this thing and put it on high and I don't have to worry about deleting the battery too awful much. Now, uh, and obviously I'm a work in progress here and I add things as I need them. Uh, one thing I added that was <laughs> turned out to be crucial is if you can see it in the back back there, that's one of those two piece uh, nesting camping toilets. Uh, my first couple trips out, we experienced, oh, a lot of rain. So if you've been camping, sorry, it's hot out here. You've been camping a lot, um, around the fire, having a few beers, about four or five o'clock in the morning, Sorry about that, folks. Apparently the GoPro decided it wanted to turn off. So we're back. So, but as I was saying, um, five, six o'clock in the morning, bladder's full, it needs to be emptied, and it's raining. Well, that was not a lot of fun climbing out of the truck, taking care of business, and then getting back in, then trying to dry off. Ugh. So that's when I decided that that was a must-have item. And believe me, that thing works great. <laughs> Um, uh, for those early morning uh, bladder empty rituals. Uh, in it, uh, you basically take a, it's like a, one of the small trash, uh, plastic trash bags. You put it in there. I won't get into too much detail, but what I found was I took some unscented um, kitty litter. I put a couple of scoops in there. That works great. Um, as far as no odor. I mean, you do your business, you close it up, there you go. Next morning when you're ready to get out of the truck, you take the bag, you throw it in the dumpster, and off you go. Okay. Now, 
the mattress, as you see, I, I bought one of those little plastic bags. I got all the linens and everything pulled off here because it's wash day. But I did that because there's going to be times, and it actually happened. I uh, had the window open and it starts raining. Rain came in, got all this wet, but mattress stayed dry. Yeah, it's easier to dry um, a blanket than it is a mattress. So that's why I went with that route. Now, a couple other items that I like to take. This guy right here, also a yard sale find. So, you know, just keeping it inexpensive. It's basically a TV tray. Not much to it, but it's perfect, perfect height. I can set it in here, uh, move it back and forth wherever I want it. And there's my fan, and then I got enough room for my little DVD player. So I'm good to go. And traveling, I pretty much just fold it up, which is nice. It just folds up and set it right there on the end of the bed. That doesn't go anywhere. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I've seen a lot of, uh, don't get me wrong, there's tons of builds out there that are just awesome, excuse me, place to put that, is where um, uh, individuals have actually built their own little bed with pull-out shelves and all that stuff. Um, that's, I think that's awesome. I think it's really cool. Um, but for my needs in my camping trips, it's not a necessity at this time. I'm the weekend warrior camper. I like going for a night or two, but still having a full-time job. I'm, I can't spend an extended period of time out there. If I get fortunate enough to get to that point, then we'll do some, definitely some readjusting. But this was my best option, this twin bread frame, which I mentioned before. It's got plenty of height, it fits above the wheel well. The only real drawback is I have no headroom. I can sit up, but you know, I'm hunched over. So, but I can't, so I can't sit up straight. But on my last camping trip, I found a necessity, um, curtains. So give me just a second and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, well, I learned on the last trip, uh, I had an issue where headlights, you know, people coming and going through, uh, into the campground, uh, shining through the truck. Now the truck itself, the windows are pretty tinted. So that's not bad, but I would like something to help block out a little bit more light. So I'm starting to install some curtains. Right now I've got one rod put together. You can see it here going across. I've got the brackets in for the second one and I'll show you how I made the rods here in just a second. But what I did not want to do, pardon the movement, is I'm just not at this point willing to drill a hole through um, the camper shell. It's fiberglass shell. So what I did was I found this type of curtain rod that I'm using and these little brackets. So what I did was I just loosened these two screws and I slid that down and then tightened it back up. And that dude ain't going anywhere. And I didn't have to put a hole in my truck. So I'm pretty glad for that. So right now I'm going to set you back down and I'll show you how I put the rod together. Okay guys, what I did was I picked up, a, uh, well I picked up four total of these 48 by 84 inch sash rods. Okay, the brackets they come with, but now I have spares. And there's a reason I picked up basically two per side. Let me open this up. There we go. See that's the bracket we saw up there. Not much to it, but it's got plenty of room that I can tuck it in behind something. That way I felt like I didn't have to drill any holes in the actual uh, fiberglass shell. But about uh, two for each side for a reason. Well, one, and these things are fully extended. Whoops, <laughs> did that too well. I mean, they'll just barely fit, but man, that they bow in the middle considerably. So, what I did was two. So these will be my two ends of 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this guy down and he's going to be my center support. So let's, let's get putting together. First thing we need to do is grab a pair of pliers. Be right back. Pliers. So we're going to take the centerpiece. Make sure you know which one's which here. All right. Yep. This is the big one. And we're just going to lop that dude off. I tried using a hacksaw, but with this thin, thin aluminum, that just did not work out when I put the first one in. So, take some tin snips, get a good bite, and then we take the pliers and we open that dude back up. This takes a little bit of effort, and you want to be careful, but it's not so bad. Opening. Ah, I messed it up. Okay. Now we're going to take, uh, now that's pretty close. We'll take this guy. Shove them in the proper end, so I don't have any issues. Okay, and you can see, you can see down there how far that's that's up in there. So now what I'm going to do is take this, get an eyeball measurement, and trim it down. So I'll be right back. Okay, I got that eyeball measured because I can see the little groove in here where how far up the other one extends. So now we're going to trim this guy off. Snippers. Straighten him out a bit. Enough that it'll fit down in the hole. Let's just tweak that oh, just a little bit. Let's see how this goes together. Perfect. Now we're going to neaten up this end a little bit. This doesn't take a lot. Things from poking out. Let's see how it fits. Boom! There we go. Now what I did find on the other one is I got a little piece of Velcro. I'm gonna wrap around here. Just give it a little bit more support up here on the carpet of the, of the shell. So there we go. Now we need curtains. So let's get busy with that. Okay well, guys, we're gonna make some curtains. Uh, what I've taken was basically just an old bed sheet I had, cleaned it up and it's gonna work out perfect. I like the color, I like the thickness. So the first thing we need to do when making curtains, yes, I know how to sew, <laughs> is we're going to spread this dude out and get our measurements. I need four panels, already measured in the truck, that are going to be 48 inches wide and 16 inches deep. So let me get this spread out, measured up, and we'll be right back. Just double checking my measurements for our first panel. Uh, I went, like I said before, 48 by 16. So you have to go over on your measurements a little bit because, well, one, we have to create a pocket for the curtain rod and one for the hemming. Fortunately, we don't have to hem this end. It already has one end on it, so we're good there. So I got my measurements, got them pinned. So we're gonna cut some stuff. Be right back. four panels cut and we're ready to take him to the machine so let's get back to it
Oh, little history. Uh, this guy is older than I am. <laughs> so maybe uh, your parents or your grandparents may recognize this Brandon model. It's been in the family for a long time. Oops. Straighten up. Ow, got stabbed. Nice. All right, everybody. And if I can work cloth, that's, sorry, that's four. So we got them all. So we can get them installed in the truck. See you in a minute. Okay, guys, we're back. We got the curtains installed. It needs a little bit of adjusting, but in all, I think it worked out pretty good. So let me, let me give you a bird's eye view here. And we got them up. And I'm sure you notice they're a little cattywampus. That just needs to uh, adjust the brackets. But for, hey, for homemade curtains and a couple of cheap curtain rods, I'm pretty pleased. One thing I want to show you, so give me a minute here. Uh, to avoid these things popping out and going down the road, I put in a little tiny tie wrap right through the top of that. That keeps it from popping out and it's easy to pop off and if I need to to wash the curtains but as you can see as I said we're a little cattywampus <laughs> but the velcro idea worked great as far as supporting that center and that one's a little low over there but that's just adjusting the bracket that's a little hot today so I think I'm not going to do that just yet so <clears throat> all right well thanks for well, not really riding along with me, but for visiting the inside of my camping truck today. Um, I've said it before, I'm very new to the truck camping. So if you guys got any suggestions or any ideas, I'm more than welcome to uh, take a read. So throw a comment down below. It'd be great. Much appreciated. And everybody, you have a wonderful day and look forward to seeing you on my next camping adventure.